Hi, this is Lucy Dacus, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Leisha from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Lucy Dacus. Hello. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Doing good. Do I look at you or the camera? <laughs> we didn't I like to go do a little bit of back here. and forth. Okay. Cool. We're here in Toronto tonight. How excited are you to be back in our lovely city? I'm really pumped because every time we've played here, we've had like a really unexpectedly good time. Like I feel nostalgic for this city, actually. Like there are a couple towns like this place in Philly. Like every time we go, I think like, oh, I could actually live here maybe. So it's nice to be back. Is it true that you keep an itinerary for a lot of the cities you go to, or you kind of have a to-do list per place? Yeah, I mean, it's mostly mundane to-do list. It's like, oh, show up to the venue, sound check, eat dinner, play show, go to hotel. Like, you mean, like, for fun stuff? Yeah. Um, we don't really have that much time. Like, it's so much driving. Like, today we drove six and a half hours from Montreal. Those are always fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's nice. That drive is actually not bad because there's, like, a lot of trees and um, it looks nice but uh yeah when we have like an extra hour or so we'll just walk around try to go to nature spots like that, that always seems to revive our spirits a lot and you're kind of telling me before the camera started rolling you're going to niagara falls tonight yeah so it's good that you're able to fit that kind of stuff in yeah we have a day off tomorrow so we're gonna we're our hotel is like walking distance from niagara falls so that'll be cool I know you love touring and eventually would love to see the whole world, but where would you love to perform as of right now that you have yet to? Um, the dream is always to go to Croatia. I'm like kind of obsessed with Croatia and like kind of like mid and Eastern European cities like Prague and Vienna. Um, really just beautiful places that I would like the whole band to see that I've been before and yeah, I don't know when that's going to happen, but hopefully soon. You kind of said you're obsessed there with Croatia. Oh was God. there a reason yeah. that sparked that for you way back? Or what was it about Yeah, there? I visited, like, last, not, at, like, two springs ago. And um, I, like, didn't really know anything about the country or what it looked like or what was going down there. But it's just really beautiful and, like, serene and peaceful. Like, the town I was in, Rovin, um just like super picturesque like whenever people are like i want to travel i don't really know where to go i'm like i will plan your trip to croatia <laughs> just like give me some dates that you're free but yeah i came across something saying how you pretty much need an extra suitcase a lot of time when you're on the road from all of the books and other merch things that you accumulate yeah i'll bring like an extra bag or like i'll we'll like sell merch and once the box is empty that'll get filled up with books or other records that we bought and um yeah by the end of the tour it really feels like it's a lot more full than it was when we originally packed it but what are some of the coolest souvenirs that you have received or bought while on the road um well i really like trading records with bands that like open for us or that we open for um there's this band valley maker that we really liked from seattle and uh I listen to their record at home all the time. Uh, we traded records with Daughter, who are an awesome band. They put out a really good record this year. And um, I mean, Car Seat Headrest, I'm about to definitely suggest a trade for their records because I listen to that <laughs> album all the time. I was going to say, when you say trade, I didn't know if you meant trade your own record for their record or if things in your own collection. But I guess you mean like your actual Oh, yeah, album. like our, like that's our cool. album. <laughs> yeah, because that's what we have to give and that's what they have to give. Yeah. Usually it's pretty, like, that's a pretty standard thing that I really like that musicians do. It happens a lot, like, in the DIY scene, like, just trading music like that. But I found that people even at a higher level tend to do it as well. well just speaking of your record, No Burden is officially released. Congrats. Thanks. <laughs> you're very welcome. When I listen to a lot of the lyrics. I feel like you're observing people or there are a bunch of different stories throughout this album. Is that kind of what influences a lot of your tracks? People watching in a way? Yeah, like from up close or far away, you know, watching people that I really know and people that I don't. Uh, and people I know, it's like easy to write about because I spend a lot of time thinking and ruminating on who they are to me and just innately. Um, when I'm writing about strangers, it's like a little more creativity. It's maybe not fair to that specific person because I don't really know them. You're kind of filling in the story, right? Yeah, which isn't like a great way to go about life in general, but I don't think it hurts anyone in terms of songwriting. In a direct address, there's a lyric that I love, and it's, 
it's hard enough for me to not fall in love with every person I see. So is that about literal love or kind of going back to observing people and just wanting to know their story and falling in love with that? Um, probably a bit of both or just knowing that the latter thing that you said, like just seeing someone and wondering about them and imagining who they are, uh, that also has room for imagining who they could be to you. Like, um, if we got to know each other, would we just be like the most invincible duo and like as a friend like I think you can be friend in love too of course. and um like yeah so I'll see or meet people and be like man if we had more time and that's kind of the bummer about touring is like I'll meet people all the time and be like damn if I was in this city we would hang yeah. I would like ask them to go to lunch or something and uh it just doesn't really happen that way so I'm trying to figure out how to like facilitate more things like that, but I haven't figured it out yet. That happens a lot when interviewing artists as well, because you build these friendships afterwards sometimes, and you're like, you know that they're going to be on the road afterwards, yeah. and you're contemplating, oh, what would it be like if we were to hang out all the time? Right, yeah, and then they'll come <laughs> back in like eight months, yes. and you'll be like, see them at the show, and when it's like all really hectic. That's another thing, is when we go to cities, I'll like see friends, and I'll want them to come, and like excited to see them but then I'm at work you know like yeah. you kind of have to focus on your job I mean it's a good job it's a really fun job but it still is not like a great time to reconnect with people so yeah still figuring all that out your favorite hobbies are smoothies breakfast sandwiches and simple math what is your favorite <laughs> smoothie flavor smoothie flavor I'm into berry stuff okay so like basically a bunch of berries and then a banana is probably a good bet for me um but we all vary as a band what okay. our favorite smoothie flavors are <laughs> it's so funny i also have a couple of tweets from you that i really enjoyed so okay. i was wondering if you just tell me the story behind a couple of them okay all right so the first thing is things i like tan lines <laughs> clipped nail polish gray hair i was just thinking about like stuff that i like and i have a bunch of gray hair like under my hair even though i'm like 21 and i often have chip nail polish and I also have tan lines and these are things that like my mom or like her friends or even friends of mine by like beauty standards like that's no like don't even to any of those things like you don't want any of those but I really like them innately and I don't know when you like stuff you should just put it out there that it's okay especially things that are Unique not desirable like yeah or things that you wish people looked at as beautiful and yeah I don't really get how Twitter works but <laughs> I was just thinking about it and so I tweeted it <laughs> you really might not know how it works I see you're really good at it okay so I have another one here which was <laughs> karaoke is too much of an emotional roller coaster for me. oh my god do you like to karaoke well okay so this was a I need to give credit to Miles our drummer for that tweet it's a sentiment we share we actually did karaoke in Toron Toronto slash Toronto. I don't know what, which is better Tirana. to say. Toronto. Um, we did karaoke like the first time that we played here, which was in June of 2015. Because um, we had a day off after with the band The Most Loyal, who are an awesome local band. I don't know if you know about them. But um, it's like so many people have been practicing in their room like some people are there to have fun some people are just embarrassingly drunk some people are like making confessions of love some people are there alone like i just can't take the variety it's like too much you don't like, know which it's one like, to do it's like every five minutes you're seeing somebody have a panic attack on stage essentially or uh I don't know. It's like just really hard because if you do think about that person that you're watching, which I do, I like step too far into what I think their story is. Okay. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so important to that person. And this isn't that important to me. And also, I don't really like to sing at karaoke because uh, it's just not like I play shows, you know, like I don't need to take up other people's time for their singing. And like, I don't know, it's not fun for me to go up and sing for some reason. What would be one of your go-to either karaoke tracks or a band that you'd just go up and kind of belt your heart out? Um, probably Soul Love by David Bowie, okay. I think is a great karaoke song. I did Love You on Rose when I was here because everyone tends to pick like really upbeat songs at karaoke and I was like, we need to take it down. Yeah, I saw you posted notch. those on Twitter. You did a little cover yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So I thought that would be nice to just like take down the vibe, but that's so me to just try and like mellow the vibe. <laughs> I should just let the vibe be as be it is vibe. sometimes. Well, just yeah. to wrap things up today, is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who will be viewing? Oh my God. This is always the hardest question because obviously, <laughs> yes, there are probably so many things I want to say, but um, I hope everyone's feeling content. And if not, I hope that everyone's making moves to get more content. And uh, that works. Okay. I just want to say thank you so much for your time today. We do appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having bring me. Bring it in. Cool. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite artists. We'll see you cool. next time.